Hey, everybody. Um, I apologize for the lateness of these um, notes. Some of you know, because you have asked me, that the, the original recordings I made didn't work, so I'm redoing them. And um, all right. So today we're looking at some new trigonometric properties. Last time we had the um, all of the properties we knew at that point, the reciprocal properties, the quotient properties, the properties having to do with period, the properties having to do with even and odd. And now we're moving on. I wanted to give you all of the properties that we'll look at in this chapter in one set of notes. So we have the sum and difference identities, the double angle identities, the half angle identities, the power reducing identities, the product to sum identities, the sum to product identities. And you do not need to memorize any of these, but what you do need to do is have them somewhere so that you can get to them easily. You can just use these notes. The properties we're gonna look at today are the sum and difference identities. The sine of alpha plus beta is the sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. The sine of alpha minus beta. See, I used the minus and the second, um, I used the lower down signs on the second. So sine of alpha minus beta is sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. The cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta, the cosine alpha minus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. And finally, the tangent of alpha plus beta is tangent alpha plus tangent beta divided by one minus tangent alpha tangent beta. And tangent alpha minus beta is tangent alpha minus tangent beta divided by one plus tangent alpha tangent beta. So we're gonna keep those three identities close at hand and play with them. Where are they? There they are. So this time, the property that we want to have close is the cosine of alpha plus beta. I'm going to write that down. Cosine of alpha plus beta is the cosine of alpha cosine of beta minus sine alpha sine beta. So the things that we need in order to expand, that's what we usually say, in order to expand cosine alpha plus beta, we need to have the sine of alpha, which they give us, the cosine of alpha, which they did not give us, the sine of beta, which they didn't give us, and the cosine of beta, which they did give us. And they tell us where alpha is. Alpha is in quadrant four, and they tell us where beta is. Beta is in quadrant three. So what we're gonna do is draw triangles. Let's see, beta is in quadrant three. And what do we know about beta? Oh, we know that the cosine of beta is negative 11 over 15. Remember that in quadrant three, which is where we are, x and y are negative, and that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always positive. So our hypotenuse will be 15. The adjacent side will be negative 11. To find the, um, the vertical side or the opposite side, we just use Pythagorean theorem. We have negative 11 squared plus b squared is equal to 15 squared. 15 squared is 225. A negative 11 squared is 121. Is that right? All of a sudden I'm having questions about in my head about 15 squared. 15 times 15 is 25, 5, 6, 7, 5. One, five, two, that, yep, that's right, 225. Okay, so, well, so we're gonna subtract 121 from both sides. 
we get b squared four zero is 104 so b is plus or minus we're taking the square root of both sides the square root of 104 so 104 has a, a factor of four and four is a perfect square so we do want to factor that out two goes in or four goes into 10 twice with a remainder of two four goes into 24 six times and 26 does not have any factors of, of any perfect squares so that's good that means that our side opposite is going to be either positive or negative two times the square root of 26. well i'm in quadrant three so i know y is negative so i'm going to use the negative option So that takes care of all of the sides of angle for the triangle with angle beta. We already had the cosine of beta. We also needed the sine of beta. So let's see. The sine of beta is opposite over hypotenuse. That's negative 2 times the square root of 26 divided by 15 for the sine. So now we've got cosine and sine of beta. We need cosine and sine of alpha. Let's use a different color. Alpha is in quadrant four. And what we know about alpha is that the sine of alpha is negative 13 over 14. In quadrant four, y is negative, x is positive. So, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's an h, y, okay, hypotenuse. So we've got negative 13 for the vertical side. 14 for the hypotenuse, and I'm going to label the horizontal side A, horizontal or adjacent side A. And again, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. I know that A squared plus negative 13 squared is 14 squared. So we have A squared plus 169 is equal to 196, yes, 196. We're going to subtract 169 from both sides. And we get that A squared A squared is 27. So A is plus or minus the square root of 27. Remember, 27 is three times nine. Nine is a perfect square, so we can factor that out. So the side A is either positive or negative three times the square root of three. Well, our A is going to be positive because in quadrant four, X is positive. So A is going to be positive three, square root of three. And now we can go ahead and write down what we need. We already had that the sine of alpha was negative 13 over 14. And we know that cosine of alpha, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, will be 3 times the square root of 3 divided by 14. The formula for the expansion of the cosine of two angles. So we've got cosine of alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta and we have all those things so let's fill them in the cosine of alpha it's funny the first thing that we need is the last thing we found the cosine of beta is negative 11 over 15 
the sine of alpha is negative 13 over 14. The sine of beta is negative two times the square root of 26 over 15. I can see that my denominators are gonna match. I've got 14 times 15 and 14 times 15 in both, which is nice. 14 times 15 is 210. So in the denominators of both fractions, I'm gonna have 210. In the numerator, I've got negative 35. 3, 11 times 3 is 33, and it's negative, times the square root of 3, minus, in the numerator of the second fraction, I'm going to have negative 13 times negative 2, that'll be positive 26, times the square root of 26, and also over 210. And the only thing really that we can do with this is put them all under one, uh, as one fraction. So we can write that as negative 33 times the square root of three minus 26 times the square root of 26. Okay, great. But there's always more. Well, this is a lot of fun. We're starting with cosine of something, cosine of another something. Oh, wait minus the sign, the same first things and the same second things. So what is, what formula looks like cosine of I say, or one cosine two minus sine of one, sine of two. Let's look at the formulas that we have. I think I stuck it on the back here. Yes. Which formula looks like cosine of something, cosine of something else, cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. So it's the cosine of one plus two. This is the cosine of one plus two. And now we can just add, we even have a common denominator. This is the cosine of 25 pi plus 17 pi, all divided by 24. 25 plus 17 is 42. So I have the cosine of 42 pi over 24. Is that bigger than 2 pi? 2 times 24 is 48. It's less than 2 pi. So we just need to reduce. Um, 6 goes into both. So let's uh, divide both by 6. 6 goes into 42 7 times. 6 goes into 24 4 times. Okay, that looks good. So we're just trying to find what is the cosine of seven pi over four. And I'm gonna use my unit circle. It has the denominator of four. So I know it's gonna be two over the square root, of, the square root of two over two. I just have to remember, is it positive or negative? Well, seven pi over four is in quadrant four and cosine is positive there. So it's positive square root of two over two. And that's the answer for that. So you're just looking for patterns. This is another kind of thing. That these formulas are similar to things you'll see in physics and engineering classes. So you want to simplify the function p of t equals 4.0258 times the cosine of 50t minus 14 pi. What? Well, we're just going to focus on the second part. We're going to look at what is the cosine of 50t minus 14 pi. And we're going to use 
the cosine of the difference formula. The cosine of the difference, cosine of alpha minus beta is cosine alpha, cosine beta plus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. Oh, okay, so I'm just going to expand cosine of 50t minus 14 pi, where 50t is alpha and positive 14 pi, because I already have the negative accounted for. Positive 14 pi is beta. All right, that's, we can do that. Cosine of 50t times cosine of 14 pi, my, oh, plus, plus, the sine of 50t times the sine of 14 pi. Hey, this is nice because 14 is an even multiple of 2 pi. I know what the cosine of 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, etc. I know all of those are 1. And the sine of any multiple of pi is 0. So this whole thing simplifies to just cosine of 50t. times this number in front. So we've got 4.0258 times the cosine of 50t. Let's prove some identities. Let's look at the sine of the sum of two angles divided by the cosine of q times the sine of p. And we want that to become the goal is tangent P cotangent Q plus one. All right, the formula for the sine of the sum of two angles. Sine of alpha plus beta is the sine of alpha cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. So we're going to use this expansion to rewrite the numerator. I'll have the sine of P times the cosine of Q plus the cosine of P times the sine of Q, all divided by cosine of Q sine of P. Okay, this fraction is actually the sum of two fractions. Do you see that there's a similarity between, uh, let's see, x plus y over b. These are similar in that I can rewrite x plus y over b as x over b plus y over b. I have a common denominator. You just think of it backward. So here I have a common denominator. I'm going to write it as two fractions. So I'll have the sine of P cosine of Q divided by cosine of Q sine of P plus. Now we're going to write the second fraction, cosine of P sine of Q divided by cosine of Q sine of P. Now let's see if we can simplify either fraction. The first step that we did when we expanded, we were using the sum or difference of two angles property. That was a trig step. So sum of angles. Since then, we're, we're doing algebra. So the second step was algebra, and we're going to do another step, which is algebra. We're going to simplify these fractions. In the first fraction, I have a sine p in numerator and denominator, and I can divide them out. I have a cosine q in numerator and denominator. I can divide them out. That whole fraction becomes 1. And I didn't use any trig to get there. I just used algebra. In the second fraction, what is the goal? Gosh, let's go back. 
we want the tangent of P times the cotangent of Q. Tangent P, that's sine P over cosine P. Sine P over cosine P. We've got it backward. Interesting. Okay, the miracle of the pause occurred. And um, so I can see that my goal needs to be, if, if tangent Q is going to happen, then it needs to be sine Q over cosine Q. Cotangent of P, that's cosine P over sine P, cosine P over sine P. So to write an algebra step to get ready for the final uh, trig step, I'm just gonna write the two fractions in the right order. I'm gonna write sine Q divided by cosine Q. And cosine P divided by the sine of P. That's algebra. The final step will be, we'll use the quotient property. And we're just going to replace sine Q over cosine Q with tangent Q and cosine P over sine P with cotangent P. Since both of these are quotient properties, we can do them at the same time. It's almost the only time you can do two steps at once in Connect Math. Okay, here's a fun one. Simplify as much as possible. The sine of three pi over two minus X. Well, I'm just gonna use the formula for expanding the sine. So let's see, sine of alpha minus beta, the sine of alpha minus beta is the sine of alpha cosine of beta minus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta where in this case, alpha is three pi over two and X is beta. So we've got the sine of three pi over two minus X is equal to the sine of the first thing, sine of three pi over two cosine of the second thing. And remember, we don't have to worry about the negative in the middle. We took care of that with the formula. So X is just a positive X. Minus cosine of the first thing, cosine of three pi over two times the sine of the second thing, sine of X. Put parentheses around that for prettiness sake. Now we can evaluate. So this step we just did is using the sum or difference formula. So sum or difference formula E. That would be the step. Now we're going to use the evaluation. Um, uh, reason so that we can actually get values for the sine of three pi over two and the cosine of three pi over two. Well, the sine of three pi over two, that's at the bottom of the unit circle, the negative y-axis. So we'll have negative one here, cosine of x minus the cosine of any multiple of pi over two is zero. So we've got zero times the sine of X. That means the second term is going to go away. But in the evaluation step, I cannot do any algebra. So you have to write this step as negative one times the cosine of X minus zero times the sine of X or connect math will count it wrong. Then you can do algebra and make it prettier. 
So then you get negative cosine x, and that's the answer. So the original is just going to be negative cosine 